Christopher Nolan's sci-fi epic Interstellar is unique among films because the idea for the project didn't come from a director or screenwriter, but was in fact created by a scientist. It was the brainchild of prominent physicist Kip Thorne as well as film producer Linda Opst, and together they pitched the Interstellar project to Christopher Nolan. So despite its unbelievable visuals, Kip Thorne made sure Interstellar was grounded in scientific reality. Well, for the most part. But just how much of it is real science and what parts are just movie magic? In this series, we're going to explore the elements and plot points in Interstellar to figure out what's science and what's science fiction. Today we're going to look at the main point of conflict in the film, the loss of edible crops which have been killed off by blight. So what in the heck is blight? Well, blight is a general term used to describe any pathogen such as a virus, bacteria, or fungi that attacks plant species. The Earth in Interstellar appears to have been devastated by a blight capable of wiping out all edible foods. Blight. Wheat, seven years ago. Okra, this year. Now there's just corn. And we're growing more than we ever have. Well, with like the uh, potatoes in Ireland and the wheat in the Dust Bowl, the corn will die. There are tons of examples of blight in real life that have had disastrous effects to the plants they prey on. In the early 1900s, chestnut trees in the US fell under attack from Cryphonectria parasitica, a fungus that was accidentally introduced from Japan. In 1904, there were over 4 billion chestnut trees in the US, but today there are only 3,000. The water mold Phytophthore Phyto fuck Latin, was responsible for the Great Irish Potato Famine in the 1850s, which led to the starvation of over a million people and caused a million more to flee Ireland for greener pastures. In the 1950s, the main banana exported to the US and around the world was known as the Gros Michel, an apparently delicious banana -nana grown in South America. Unfortunately, the species is now extinct due to the... God damn it. The banana we enjoy today is the closely related Cavendish banana, but it too is starting to fall victim to the fungus. So there are lots of real-world examples of blights and their ability to cause real damage to our food supply. But each of these blights attacks a specific type of plant. Despite the near extinction of the American chestnut tree, Japanese and Chinese chestnut trees are actually quite resistant to Cryphonectria parasitica. Although generalist blights that are capable of infecting multiple species do exist, they are typically less effective killers as well. Certainly nothing has ever been seen in nature capable of taking down every single edible crop species. But it is possible that many blights could wipe out the largest crop species, such as corn and rice, leading to global starvation. But then Interstellar goes on to burden itself with this line. The last people to starve will be the first to suffocate. And your daughter's generation will be the last to survive on Earth. We depend on plants not only for food, but also to help us breathe. They sequester harmful CO2 and produce breathable oxygen through a process known as photosynthesis. However, this line by Professor Brand suggests that not only are all edible crops being affected, all plants are being killed off by blight, which is massively different. The only way this could occur is if the blight targeted chlorophyll A, which is a molecule necessary for photosynthesis to occur in all plants and algae. And even if this blight did exist, there is no feasible way for any one virus, bacteria, or blight to get past the defenses of every single kind of plant on the planet, as there are approximately 290,000 different species. So what we're actually talking about here is not one blight, but hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of different blights simultaneously wiping out every or at least most plant species on the planet. But from there it gets even stupider because plants only produce 50% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. If that 50% disappeared, humans could still survive. The base camp at Everest has approximately half the oxygen and atmospheric pressure of that at sea level, and it's still possible to live there year round. The other 50% of our oxygen is produced by phytoplankton and cyanobacteria, which are single-celled organisms that live in oceans, lakes, and rivers, of which there are an estimated 10,000 different species. So now we need thousands of blights to tackle plants, and a couple more thousand to wipe out phytoplankton and cyanobacteria. Simultaneously. That's it. That's it. I'm done. We're done here.
That's it, guys. Show's over. This one line by Professor Brand saying that blight will cause humanity to suffocate turned a somewhat plausible scenario into total nonsense. So, blight in Interstellar, science or science fiction? Wow, well, it's not very scientific. If you want to talk science, you gotta record the facts, analyze, get to the how and the why, then present your conclusions. This was all a sham. No, Murph, it's okay. You're gonna be fine. It's not actually possible for you to suffocate. You left us here. It's, you're gonna be okay. Murph, calm down, Murph. Suffocate. It's gonna be okay, Murph. It's gonna be fine, Murph. Murph! To starve? Murph!